from Webb's World. What percentage of FPV pilots are still flying analog? How many do you think you've switched to digital? Webb's World, um, Albert Kim just did a survey on his YouTube channel. I reshared the survey because I wanted to help it get more visibility. Uh, at the last time I checked, the survey was at about 5,000 to 6,000 respondents. So that's that's a pretty big number. Like, that's not nothing. I don't know if it reaches a level of statistical significance, but it certainly is some meaning. And in his survey, about 45% of people flew analog as their primary. And then uh, the remaining ones were DJI. I should look because I may be misremembering that. I can't remember if DJI was over 50%. Digital was definitely over 50%. Let me see if I can uh, just double check that real quick and make sure I'm getting the, yeah, here we go. Here it is. Uh, which video system do you primarily fly? He asked, 34% uh, analog. There we go, 40% DJI, and then a smattering of others. So I feel like we could definitively say that less than half of FPV pilots fly analog as their primary system. Now, most people probably have at least one analog quad somewhere in their stable. I would guess if you asked, do you have at least one analog quad, the number would be like in the 80s, maybe higher. Um, but 40% uh, fly DJI and only 34% fly analog primarily. So there you go. Good question. Uh, what if Skyzone and Walksnail got together? It would be really cool to see Walksnail outsourcing their hardware into third-party goggles. I don't, I don't have any indication that they're actually interested in do that, doing that or see that as beneficial. So I don't see that happening, but you know, anything could happen, maybe. Um, we got a question here. Thank you for a $5 super chat. Should I start freestyle with a micro like the Flywoo Firefly or with a three to five inch with the new remote ID stuff? I'd like to know what would be best for a noob. Um, the best thing to do would be to start in the simulator, start in the simulator. That is not the answer. Anyone wants to hear. They won't want to go outside and fly the real thing. You should start in the simulator a hundred percent. The first time you do anything, you should do it in the simulator. Unless you're just fine with crashing and breaking your shit and don't care. And some people are. In which case, more power to you. Um, like, you can just get the, get the moves down, and then when you do them in real life, they'll be much easier. Uh, assuming you've practiced in the sim, should you get something like the Flywoo Firefly or a three to five inch? If you're really concerned about remote ID, then the best thing to do is to get a three or a three and a half inch sub 250 gram. You can get a really good flying three and a half inch with a, with an analog video transmitter, sure, or a digital video transmitter if you want that. Don't bother with putting a high definition camera on it. You don't need to capture footage. Especially if you use a digital system, the DVR is good enough to review what you're doing and maybe share it with your friends if you're interested in doing that. Uh, so I would say if you're concerned about remote ID, get like a, a sub 250 gram three or three and a half inch. Uh, something like the uh, Crux 3.5 or a Tiny Trainer are good choices. Personally, I think that most people are way more concerned about remote ID than they really need to be from a practical perspective. I certainly would not like encourage people to break the rules. That would be irresponsible and would make me uh, look, look reckless and bad. So I would never do that. But I would say realistically speaking, like on the scale, uh, on the sort of spectrum of shit you need to worry about, Right? Like, this is one of the things I've learned as I've gotten older, uh, which I know everyone loves to hear old people talk about what things they learned as they got older. The only people who really like that are other old people. They go, yes, that's very smart. I also am smart because I'm old. One of the things I've learned as I've gotten older is that I, I should divide the world into things that I need to care about and, and can have an effect on and things that I 
either just aren't my responsibility and don't need to care about and or cannot really affect and so don't need to waste energy thinking about. Right? And for many people, remote ID is should be on the I've got bigger shit to worry about side. If you are not, if you're a recreational pilot, uh, th the chances of you, if you're recreational and you don't post stuff on the internet and just fly for recreation, the chances of you ever seeing an FAA qu inquiry about whether you're using remote ID are essentially zero. I feel comfortable making that statement. Now you decide what you want to do with that information. If you go, yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the right thing. That's cool, that's fine. But I, I hate to see people going. Well, I guess I'm just gonna uh, sell all my five-inch quads because I'm not doing this remote ID thing. And I'm like, do you, do you, is that like, do you really have to do that? Is that the, is there like another option? Yeah, Black Jungle, super on point. Black Jungle is a, in my Discord. He's a patron, and he makes memes during my live streams. Yeah, actually, I think you've been gone for recent live streams, Black Jungle. Good to see you back. Here is what Black Jungle has to say, and I 1,000% agree. People flying long range and people flying with VTXs over one watt, both of whom are breaking the rules. Let's put on that people who fly without a spotter. People who don't have their ham license. And all these people are like, ah, remote ID. Oh, no, I wouldn't break the rules. I'll just have to quit the hobby. I've been breaking the rules for the last five years. Not not me. I'm doing a character. Now, now this and oh, now it's I'm Now it's too much. What are your thoughts on the trend of gorilla whooping? Thanks, Alexander Seidler, for a $5 super chat. Continuing our super chat rundown. Um, a, a gorilla whooping is where, like, somebody like Zorro FPV I've seen do it, or Bachrinder. They go to a mall or they go to, like, a shopping, a grocery store, and they fly their tiny whoop around and just, like, basically just don't, don't give a heck uh, about the people that are around there. Sometimes they even, like, uh, uh, you know, interact with them in funny and or annoying ways. Um, it's, it's it's pretty much anything you do with a tiny whoop is harmless because they're so small and innocuous. Um, like if you like fly a tiny whoop into like somebody's long hair, that's pretty rude. That could be bad. So they're not like completely innocuous. If you were to, if you were to fly a tiny whoop like into a public restroom, then that's not innocuous. So like they're not completely innocuous, but they're pretty innocuous. So I don't really care. I'm not bad. I'm not mad about it. I think it's fun and funny and it's not that it's it's by far the le not the most annoying thing you could do to people in public. 